Let us seat you here among your trappings. Well, the, the stage set, I think, is preferable with the battlements around me. Oh, perhaps I should be fondling the dagger with which I shall use to kill Duncan. <laughs> no, no, my dear Garrick, let us have you in your natural habitat, as it were, behind the scenes, where artifice is set aside. Will you drop the mantle of the evil Macbeth? Don't speak that name. Where genius and creativity strike sparks. My dear Reynolds, <laughs> if you want to paint my portrait, you shall have to comply with a few simple backstage traditions. I am at your service, of course, Garrick. Do not beware of speaking aloud the name of the Scottish usurper. But I only speak the name everyone speaks. The character you're playing to such adulation. You are called the greatest Macbeth of your generation. My dear Reynolds, desist, I beg you. Your modesty does you credit. Your modesty has nothing to do with it. Very well. I shall avoid the, the cursed name as if it were the devil's own. Here, I think this screen, uh, these bits of costume. You don't want to paint me on the stage where I live in my art? <laughs> Trust my eye for composition. Let us, let us place you here where you prepare your woes, where you peruse your script and commune with inspiration. Let us discover the great David Garrick pondering his latest role. Perhaps while I sketch, you might recite a few verses and, uh, oh, what a rogue and peasant slave. That would be the Danish prince. Oh, is it indeed? Well, it hardly matters. Anything will do. And it does matter. And it won't do. I am not currently playing Hamlet. I, you are painting me in the role of the Thane of Glamis and Cawdor and the King hereafter. Hmm? No one can hear a portrait speak. A limerick will suffice. How long will this portrait making take? Oh, three months, I should think. <laughs> three months? I have a matinee in three hours. But you get it. Calm yourself. I am not painting you today. I'm sketching, arranging, composing, finding my theme, honing the essence. Very well. <clears throat> Recite from the play, you say? Yeah, some speech of Macbeth's will be just fine. My dear Reynolds, it is devilish bad luck to speak that name when one is not actually performing in the play. How a man of your monumental intellect, a man with your profound brain, can be so beset by such balderdash? Indulge me. I have pencil and sketchbook in hand. I wish to discover you, as it were, preparing to face your audience, thinking through your speeches, contacting uh, <clears throat> your, your character. Hmm? I want to see you struck by the muse. Ah, now let us hear the voice. If it were done when it is done, then it is done well, it was done quickly. If the assassination could trammel upon the <laughs> consequence... How do you people learn all those lines? Well, now I have lost my place. Oh, I'm incredibly sorry, old fellow. I, I think I'm finding you, though. Just sit there like that. Don't move a muscle. Think, think the inner soul of, of um, you know. <laughs> Riddles, for God's sake! Don't get it by everything holy. You quite destroyed my concentration. Blast, look what you've made me. I didn't bring my eraser. Is it essential in the creation of great painting that one hum? Hmm. Did Leonardo hum? Did uh, Raphael hum? Did you hear Michelangelo humming while he painted the ceiling? I wasn't aware I was humming. Uh, you were humming, Reynolds, and a most odious melody it was. I do beg your pardon. Do resume your posture. I don't mean to appear temperamental. One does not like to hear that particular tune hummed backstage. Do you refer to my voice? Your, your personal taste? Or is this another of these extravagant theatrical superstitions? No doubt you painters have many quaint beliefs which I might find childish, uh, absurd, or even half-witted, for which I grant you entitlement. 
you tell me you players actually believe in pixies and goblins? Accept it for me, Riddles. Unspeakable occurrences have rained down on acting companies who treat lightly the invoking of the Scottish King's name and who whistle a hum or yodel. Three blind mice. Three blind mice? Three blind mice. Three blind mice? I am going mad. You can't be serious. If you must hum something, then hum Kathy was a Welshman, or Ten Dollar Scholar, or any old thing. I've not thought of that little tune since my nursery days. Have you captured my essence yet? Was I really humming three blind mice? This posing grows tedious. Sadly, I have to do this part over. Your outburst startled my pencil. Well, do get on with it, Reynolds. I have an elaborate makeup to put on for the matinee. Three blind mice, indeed. If the tune were played in a circus, the performers would refuse to do their turns. Now, if circus performers hear that melody, you can only imagine what us actors and the legitimate theater feel of it. However do these things get started? We don't question the dark forces. Was I doing it again? My dear Derek. Uh, Hamlet's ghost, huh? The upset you'd ever make a box is a forerunner of evil. Oh, well, I could not expect you to understand that. Surely you don't blame me for upsetting your makeup box. <laughs> James Boswell would understand. And Dr. Johnson, who's acquaintance, I am privileged <laughs> to enjoy, would understand. Though not men of the theatre, they understand. Even the King of England, whose ideas are limited to cows, pigs, and barley, understands. But for some reason, which is absolutely obscure to me, you, Sir Joshua Reynolds, Knight of Realm, finest portrait painter of his time or any other time, do not. I enjoy the acquaintance of Dr. Johnson, too. <laughs> Next, you will produce a mirror for me to hold, or an uh, article of real jewelry for me to wear, or some fresh flowers from the market from which to fondle, thereby sealing my doom. Um, David? When I am done. I would make a powder as dropped. It is customary, not prudent, to dance upon it. I had no idea the theater was so benighted. Pray do not scoff at my profession. Oh, I have the utmost respect for your profession. You think we prance in here and throw on any old costume and paint ourselves garishly and spend countless hours rehearsing and learning our lines and sword fights and all kind of a lark. A hobby, a frivolous pastime. Oh, you know I don't think that. The acting profession calls only the few, only the chosen hear its voice, only the chosen have the supernatural perception to walk out every evening in front of a lot of loutish patrons who don't possess even a modicum of reading or sense or, God forbid, common politeness, and speak lines meant for the ears of angels in hopes that someone in the bloody pit is sober enough to be paying attention. The theater, the temple, and the muse of stern high priestess do not speak the name of a certain Scot, do not sing the melody of a certain covenant of Scottish witches, do not, for the love of Almighty God, hung three blind mice within the walls of dramatic sanctity. 
Watch out for the maker box. Keep fresh flowers off the stage. Uh, uh, a few simple rules are all she exacts, but they are strict rules. And you come in here with your pencil and trample them into the dust. Eric, I have you. What? Oh, um. <laughs> Pray forgive a foolish old actor who loves the sound of his own voice. <laughs> I will make you immortal on canvas. Ah, I was saying to his majesty only last night, let us have a play dedicated to the sublime Sir Joshua Reynolds. <laughs> and what did his majesty say to the idea? Well, his majesty was uh, unfortunately and predictably engrossed in a pamphlet on the harvesting of alfalfa. Uh, I uh, will broach it some of the time when he's more mm, attentive. <laughs> when I have stretched my canvas, when I've arranged my colors, when I've arranged my composition, you will come to my studio and you will sit for me. And together, my dear David, we shall make art. I am profoundly grateful. <laughs> well, we stand here dawdling. Your matinee, your audience awaits. Oh, well, I thank you for your time and your forbearance, my dear, dear friend. <laughs> and I for your time and your tireless instruction in backstage etiquette. Hmm, that uh, uh, being taught, uh, dear Reynolds. <laughs> Au revoir, my dear Garrick. <laughs>